I couldn't resist making my way to the dam and I absolutely had to show you this view because really it's too exquisite. You don't get moments like this every day. The air is filled with dust and it's so still this afternoon that the sun, the setting sun, is breaking through it in the most exquisite way. Just look at this. I could see the dust from about 600 meters away as I was driving up here. And they are having so much fun. And it helps that it's Fang's herd as well, which makes me feel doubly affectionate towards them. <laughs> you missed, little one. <laughs> you hit the elephant behind you. <laughs> oh, look at the baby. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's a good chance that that could be our... No, it's not. I'm mistaken. I'm sorry. It's not our tiny, tiny little baby from Fang's herd, the one that we'd watched fall down all those weeks ago. Well, it could be. It's ti I think it's tiny enough. It's kind of hard to tell in this particular setting. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm just going to sit and let you watch this for a second. This whole place smells like wet mud and elephant and grass and dust in Africa. Oh, it's too stunning. Oh, sorry, Craig, there's Fang coming out now. There's beautiful Fang. I know I didn't describe who she was a moment earlier, but I wanted to just wait for her to come out. That, for our new viewers, is a very easily identifiable elephant. And I don't think it, I need to explain why. There's her backwards facing tusk. She's definitely one of the biggest in this herd. I suspect, if not the matriarch, very close to being the matriarch of this particular group. Her tusk used to be even longer than that, but it's completely broken off cleanly at the tip. It used to hit her leg as she walked. Having seen the way she was so gentle with that newborn calf a couple of weeks ago, checking that it was okay after its fall. I have all the time in the world for that elephant. Not that I don't for all elephants. Yes, you enjoy a dust bath, girl. Have some fun. We often talk about this sort of thing. George wants to know if the dust throwing behavior is innate or is it learned. I think it's probably a little bit of both. I think that watching baby elephants try to learn to do it, the way that they imitate the adults, I don't know that it would be all that easy to be able to answer whether or not it's, it's something that's completely instinctive or something that the babies pick up from the adults. The way that baby elephants do so much learning when they come into contact with the adults, I'm guessing it's the latter, but I don't actually know. I'm really honestly not sure. I do know that it's something special to watch in a situation like this. It almost, the dust cloud looks like mist. done with considerable more skill from the adults than it is in the little ones. We might have been short on cat sightings recently, but we certainly cannot complain about the elephant sightings. I wonder how much dust they toss up in one trunkful 
Now, H. Macy chatting about Fang with her backward-facing tusk. You want to know if it's a birth defect or an injury when the tusk was growing. Could be either. To be honest with you, it could be a combination of both. It might have been a, a cracked tooth. You know how some people, you just have a natural, when the permanent tooth grows, it doesn't grow all that well. It's got a little bit of a crack or a deadened root. And it might be that she damaged it when she was younger. Or it could just be a birth defect. I, it's hard to know for sure. She's not the only elephant in this particular area that has that problem. Not a, it's actually not even a problem, you know. She's perfectly adapted to dealing with it. But I've seen quite a few elephants with bent tusks in that direction. I've also seen quite a few elephants with two or more tusks growing out of one hole. So that does happen as well when there's some kind of a split or a break in the tusk when it starts to grow. It could be either, I'm not sure. She's probably, I would guess that Fang is over 30 years old, possibly even older, judging by the indents on her, around her temporal region. And she's massive. So she could be even older, she could be even 40 years and older. And one of our viewers apparently saw Fang not so far away from here in Kruger about three weeks ago. Rife from Reese, sorry, Chantel, what was that name? Reef. Reef from Scotland. You want to know whether or not a elephant's trunk could be considered to be a limb? Yes, I. Reese, Reese, sorry, Reese. My apologies. Um, Reese, you want to know if that could be considered to be a limb, a trunk? Yes, I don't see why not. In fact, I would say there's every reason to consider it a limb. It functions in a very, very crucial way for an elephant. And it is, has a huge amount of mobility. I'm not sure what the definition of a limb is. What is the def actual definition of a limb? Does it, does it only include legs, arms and legs? Or legs and legs in the case of an elephant? Or is there another definition to it? To me, I would consider it, it as important as their legs. If you have the answer to what the proper definition of a limb is, you can send it through on hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. As our elephants disappear off into the dust, I just have to show you something I noticed on the opposite side of the dam, just while they're carrying on like that. Admittedly quite far away, but there's a pair of Nyala ball that bulls that the entire time we've been watching these elephants have been having a serious go at each other. They're right at the back there, Craig, not him. Those two at the back over there. They have locked horns. Young Nyala bulls. So this is not a serious fight. This is an almost playful sparring session. Pushing and pulling against each other. Now, unfortunately, we're too far away to hear the sound effects, and I, I will try and get a bit closer but in a moment. But I'm scared if I do, we're going to miss out on the action. But we're too far away to hear the sound of the clash of those horns. And the fence you can see, by the way, is not a fence around the animals for our new viewers. The fence that you notice there is a fence around the camp. It's to keep people in, not animals. <laughs> I wonder if they're looking across to see if the elephants have gone and they can go and have a drink yet. Elephants tend to be quite protective over their water. Oh, obviously not a serious fight, if dinner can prove a distraction. Oh no, hold on, here we go again. No, this is not serious. When you see, when you watch an actual serious Nyala fight, they will run at each other and throw their heads forwards and downwards. And the game, in this case, is to pin your opponent's head to the ground. They're quite evenly matched. I love the fact that the ox pickers are not bothered at all. They're just carrying on with their day-to-day -day business of cleaning the coat. <laughs> hey, do you guys mind? I'm trying to fight here. Oh, 
Okay, so Texas Brigade, thank you for your definition of a limb. And I guess by your definition, or the definition that you've got for us, I guess the trunk doesn't count as a limb. Because apparently it has to be a paired appendage, such as wings, legs, um, often used for, what was it, for grasping. Did I hear that correctly? I'm going to go with yes. Cool. Perfect. Thanks, Chantal. So I guess then an elephant doesn't, elephant trunk doesn't count as a limb. Although I would say in a broad sense, yes, it does. It's so important to their day-to-day -day existence. And it's got such a range of mobility and it's involved in grasping. It's just not paired. Although now I'm picturing an elephant with two trunks and I really think I need my head read because between the elephant shoes and now a double pair of trunks, I think perhaps I should slow my imagination down one or two steps. Oh, they're stuck. Oh, no, they're separated again. Awesome. Well, I'm very glad I came down to the dam. I think it's almost time to start heading to the hyena den. However, Tristan has got something a little bit macabre to show you in the tent.